So for some reason, uh, lately I've been getting a lot of uh, comments, most of which I've just simply deleted, from the YouTube channel talking about hypothetical giant uh, woodwind instruments. And well, I am the very first person to support projects like Richard Bobo's Subconscious Bassoon or uh, Jared DeLeon's Octo Contra Clarinets that they're building. Um, there is some level of practicality that has to be addressed when we are talking about giant woodwind instruments. Not just giant woodwind instruments, but instruments in the subcontrabass register. And so I'd like to talk today a little bit about scoring for instruments below uh, the contrabass range. And by below contrabass range, we're going to say below C1. C1 being the very bottom C on the piano. And in order to do that, we need to talk a little bit of physics first. And we're going to use my uh, trusty reed organ here. It's, it's not the greatest instrument in the world. Um, I just have it here basically as a composition tool. I got it for all of 50 bucks out of an old abandoned house in the next county over. So, but it will work for the purposes uh, we need today, uh, albeit it is a little uh, loud in the motor. But anyway, so the first thing we need to address is something called the harmonic series. And we're going to do a simple harmonic series. We're going to start here on the lowest F on the organ. This is an F1. This is the bottom F on the piano. Now the harmonic series goes near fundamental pitch in the octave up, then a fifth, fourth, major third, minor third, and I run out of hand at that point, but then we go something slightly less than minor third, major, a little bit bigger to major second, major second, and then so on and so forth above there. Uh, but for someone composing, knowing the harmonic series, I can do that. That is the harmonic series up to one, two, three, four, five, the fifth partial of the harmonic series, and that is a perfect F major chord. I can add the sixth in, and it doesn't change much at all. I can drop out the fundamental, and it's not going to change the texture too much. But if I add something in there, and particularly something within the bottom octave, while well, you start to get a little bit of instability. So let's talk about uh, intervals. We have a perfect fourth right here between uh, C3 and F3. This is going to be fairly stable. A major third here between F3 and A3. Perfect fifth here, and then an octave down here. If I start getting closer than these intervals, so say I want to put a perfect fifth here. That's a bad example because one of those notes is severely out of tune, so we'll drop that down a second. It's okay, but it's not great. This is B flat 1 to F2. So the bottom B flat on the bassoon and the bottom F on the bassoon. It starts to get really muddy down there. If I had a third in there, it's super muddy. If I go even smaller to a minor third, the only reason I would use that kind of scoring is if I want this just really murky, misty effect. I'm not going to use that chord for really brilliant, bright scoring. That's only background. That's not going to be a melodic figure. So, what happens if we go lower than this? Well. Let's imagine that we can shift it down. And what I can actually do is I can shut off one of the stops. And unfortunately, the organ just, uh, let's see what happens if I do. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not going to be loud enough to pick up on the audio. But um, 
if we go lower, the only interval that's going to work in the bass is going to be the octave. And here we get into how to score instruments like the contrabassoon and the double bass. And their job is to reinforce the bassoon and the cello an octave lower than the, the fundamental pitch. Uh, the term double bass literally means to double the bass at an octave lower. So if the cello is playing... Oh, let's try that again. The cello is playing up here. We're going to double the bass at the octave. Now, let, we can do a triple octave as well. That works. Uh, because the octave is so strong, and we need that strong octave. Now, if I do... Fifths? One, parallel fifths are generally considered bad in part writing, but it doesn't come across as being very strong. You hear that major sixth there? That's really ugly. Major third down there is ugly as well. So once we get below C2, the only interval we can really use with any kind of regularity is the octave. Here is where instruments like a subcontrabassoon or an octocontrabass clarinet will work really well. Their job is going to be to support the contrabassoon or the contrabass clarinet a full octave lower. We are not going to use either of these instruments as a solo voice, by and large. Even the contrabassoon and the contrabass clarinet are not designed to be solo instruments. And this goes for the, the double bass as well. If you look at double bass solo literature, it's all up in the high register. If you look at contrabassoon solo literature, yeah, there's not, not really any, and this is coming from someone who's written a contrabassoon concerto. And same with contrabass clarinet. These are not really soloist instruments. They're not designed to be highly melodic. And this does not mean they can't be. They're just right on that edge of where being a melodic and uh, supportive instrument, uh, but being a melodic instrument stops. Uh, so what happens if we go an octave lower still to subcontrabassoon or octocontrabass clarinet territory? Any semblance of them being a melodic instrument has stopped. The only way they could be a melodic instrument at this point is if they are doubled an octave higher, and not just one octave higher, but two octaves higher as well. So we would need a triple octave. And what the triple octave scoring is going to do is going to reinforce the first harmonic and the third harmonic of our subcontrabass instrument. In doing this, we've richened the sound some, but we can't fill in any harmonies in between. So the only thing that's going to be down at the bottom is a double or a triple octave. So F, 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 and I can't fill in anything in between. So a hypothetical instrument in between a subcontrabassoon and a contrabassoon is pretty pointless as a harmonic instrument if a subcontrabassoon is present. Because the subcontrabassoon is going to fill in the only function that a, uh, a instrument in between because there's there is no name that you can really call it a a a bourdon bassoon maybe would be uh probably the closest to an appropriate name contrabass bourdon subcontrabass that could be a, an appropriate name but there's no function it can serve so at, at some point the the function of the instrument is gone you don't have a a role it can serve 
Uh, the only such instrument that exists like this as an in-between is LeBlanc's Octo Contra Alto Clarinet. And I know uh, that Jared DeLeon is building such an instrument in, in conjunction with uh, Octo Contra Bass Clarinet. The two would most would always really be playing unison or octaves. There's nothing really physically they can play any different than octaves or unisons between the two instruments. So you pick one or the other depending on the absolute range you need. And in this case, you really only would need the bigger of the two instruments just to get the extra couple notes you need. And the other one would be used more for portability and size issues. So that's where, where that stands. Um, brass instruments have existed down in this super low register, but the problem is the sound producing mechanism, the human lips, can only vibrate so slowly. And therefore, a subconscious tuba, a bourdon tuba, is highly impractical. A few instruments have been made. Uh, most of the time they are brought out as joke instruments. The Hoffnung tuba, Yale's uh, quadruple B flat, and you know what we'll get, I'll do a whole other video on why tuba nomenclature is wrong. But that's, that's in the future. Um, and, and so, yeah, if you want to write parts into the sub contrabass register, that's anything below from really C0 to C1, the only interval you can use as a composer is an octave between the next note up. You can't do harmony down there because it's going to sound like thunder. And I, uh, you, if you want thunder, that's how you do it. And I have one passage in Symphony Number no. Three where I do actually have what's essentially a thunder stop, and I'll try and emulate it here on the organ. Uh, in fact, the part in the the symphony is for big pipe organ, and it's. The problem with the reed organ is the more uh, notes you put down, the the volume goes down with it because it can only put, put out so much air and the actual pump and bellow system on this instrument has been disabled. Um, it, so if you want thunder, close intervals, minor seconds work really well. And imagine what I play down two and a half octaves and that would be where it would be. So if you want to write in the sub contrabass register, step one, it has to be there to support an octave higher, if not an octave higher, and then another octave higher, so triple octaves. And it's not gonna be a solo voice. There's no, the human ear won't be able to pick up on notes moving in that register with much clarity. So keep those in mind if you really want to write into the sub contrabass register and know that as of right now, we don't have any completed working woodwind instruments that really will effectively go there outside of museum examples. So writing in the subcontrabass register is possible, but you have to know the rules.